Lots of people ask me why another book on Franklin Roosevelt and Eleanor. The fact is, though, you wouldn't believe it, it's been 40 years since there was a book on Franklin and Eleanor Roosevelt as a couple. I started myself wondering, you know, how it was possible for a man who had polio at the age of 39 and couldn't walk a step by himself, he couldn't stand, how was it possible for him to become President of the United States at the age of 50? This great nation will endure as it has endured. And how was it possible for this woman, a very shy young woman, how was it possible for her to become the most outspoken, the most progressive, the most controversial, determined, courageous first lady this country has ever known? This universal declaration of human rights may well become the international Magna Carta of all men everywhere. It started off as a very conventional marriage between two aristocrats, fifth cousins. Eleanor didn't need to change her name, and she was given away by Theodore Roosevelt, her dead father's brother, who was, of course, the president at the time and a Republican, a progressive Republican. It was only five years later that Franklin became a Democrat. He stood as um, the Democratic candidate for the New York uh, State Senate. Everybody said he hasn't got a hope in hell as a Democrat, but he won. Was there another marriage in the history of the American presidency that affected our lives, that influenced our lives still today? I don't think so. Uh, maybe we thought that the Obama marriage was going to be similar. Certainly during the campaign, there were tremendous parallels made between um, Obama and FDR. People liked to turn Eleanor into the pushing, nagging wife. He knew what she did, he knew what she was doing, and he needed it and knew that he needed it. And she always pushed him to be more progressive. She brought people to the White House. And when I say she brought people to the White House for dinner, for picnics and so on, she brought African Americans, she brought the American Youth League uh, members who were communists. They sat around the dinner table discussing things with FDR. The thing ab about uh, Eleanor was that she lived, and Franklin, they lived in the era before television. Very glad to see you all. And it might have good not only did that make it possible for Franklin to not be photographed um, being carried in and out of cars and up and down steps and, and so on. And there were newsreels, but they were completely sensitive. Of all the people. Eleanor, who was not a good-looking woman, but she wasn't at least harassed by television. She, she was very self-conscious in front of a camera. At the present time, it is of paramount importance. Early on when they were governor and governor's wife in, in the executive mansion in Albany in New York, um, her bodyguard who was really rather, with whom she had a rather amorous relationship, he told her that she was beautiful when she smiled. And nobody had told her this before, but you know, she was beautiful when she smiled. He was often called a socialist. What's interesting, by the way, about Franklin and Eleanor, of course, is that they were aristocrats. And aristocrats, as we know, are traditionally Republicans. And the whole of the Roosevelt family, apart from Franklin, were Republicans. They thought he was a traitor to his class. Eleanor did influence his politics. The fact is she, you can see from the documents, you can see from the correspondence, she never stopped interfering. Uh, delicately, it was a tightrope that she had to uh, that she had to walk. She was trying to get an anti-lynching bill, but that was impossible because the Southern Democrats were such conservatives. They, they made it impossible for Franklin. I think, for example, she was the one who said to Franklin, it would be very good if you gave a job to Frances Perkins. Frances Perkins was a friend of hers. She was one of the progressive women, the one responsible for the, the famous 1935 Social Security Bill, which Republicans are trying to undo today, but which has completely changed the shape of modern day America. Eleanor, as she bent over all these wounded men in Europe, in the South Pacific, was very keen that Franklin should pass a bill, which it became the GI Bill, which hugely affected these men when they came back from the war. They had education, they were given jobs, they were looked after, their families and themselves. That was Eleanor saying to Franklin, we've got to thank these men for what they're doing to this country, those who are lucky enough to survive.